Super Mario Brothers movie on 4K. This, I think, is already one of the best 4K discs of 2023. All right, and here's my games. I got Super Mario World, which I absolutely suck at. Super Mario 3, Bros 3, which I kind of suck at, and then Mario 1. So those are my, those are my games. All right, so I'm going to review this 4K and this movie like it's a book club, and it's my turn. Um, but seriously, I, I think this may already be one of the best uh, looking and sounding Blu-rays of the year. I like this part right at the beginning when they're running, their van doesn't work, and so they're taking a shortcut, and it just immediately goes into Mario mode and playing some Beastie Boys. Just goes full-on side-scrolling mode. <laughs> Knock a guy down a hole here in a second. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Anyway, it's cool. It just goes. It just lets you know that these are people that you're gonna watch a story on, but that at the same time you're gonna be having fun like you are when you play the games. Also, I decided to bring my mustache to this review for, which I grew specifically for this and no other reason. Mustaches. <laughs> That's what daddies have, mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the Mario brothers get home to their super Italian family, who's pretty much all laughing at them for being on TV on their commercial. Uh, and listen to this. Hey, they gave an Oscar for worst actors? Hey, what'd I do? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, isn't it called a Razzie? Isn't that when you are a bad actor and you get the reward? It's a Razzie? Okay, so they're going down to save Brooklyn underneath, and Brian Tyler, who does the music for this, I was not expecting the music for this movie to be so awesome, but it's like it's a homage to the original series, but then it's also uh, like orchestrated, but then they in, they orchestrate original, or not series, but the original game. They orchestrate some of the original game music. Listen to this little sneaky uh, musical motif or whatever they sneak in right here. Did you hear that? Do it again. You hear that? So it's the higher piano and then the lower piano. All right, so as soon as they get to the Mushroom Kingdom, the colors just go off the scale and it's almost like overwhelming to your eyes. Um, and on Dolby Vision, it just looks incredible. But this part is so funny where Toad is leading them through this crowd. Watch, there, somebody walks by with a fish in a bag like from a pet store. Watch the fish's face as it looks at Mario. <laughs> this part's so funny. He's gonna be fine. Shit's Here comes the fish. Look at his face. <laughs> You see I that? Know, right? It just gives them this angry, squinty look. Also, this leads right into another part I really liked. So they're gonna walk by this antique store, and this person's asking the owner, "Does it still work?" And listen to what the owner says for, for how you make it work. You gotta listen carefully. Okay, so I don't know if you could actually hear that, but the, one of the little mushrooms says, does it still work? And the shop owner is like, yeah, it still works. You just have to blow and do it. And the reason that's awesome is because, so back in the day when playing original Nintendo, sometimes it would stop working or get all garbly. And so you would just turn it over and blow into it and then put it back in and it would supposedly work. I don't know if that was an urban legend or if that actually helped. It seemed to help in my family when we would try it, but that's what they're referring to. And I thought that was an awesome Easter egg to like the mechanical process of playing these old video games. So it, that got me in the feels on that part. Okay, so of course we have the strong independent princess announcing what she's gonna do to her loyal subjects. But listen to what this little mushroom says. Going to stop Bowser. How? Look at us. We're adorable. <laughs> I'm going to con Speaking of toads being awesome, <laughs> There's a whole doggy pile of toads on top of Mario right now, and she tells him to wait and watch what the last one does right after he gets off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so Jack Black Bowser is telling his army what his plan is, and listen to this one guy in the very the the very background. Yeah. Did he say marry their princess? Listen. Of course she hates me. <laughs> you see this guy in the background. Doesn't she hate you? <laughs> this movie is so awesome. It's just so fun to watch. Look at their long journey. Look at those little Yoshi dinosaurs in the background. On their long journey. So 
little little pink Yoshi there, a little Easter egg. Okay, so in one of the most oddly famous parts of this movie, the Peaches song by by Bowser, look at look at this awesome detail on his piano. You see that? It says Ludwig von Koopa. <laughs> That's cool. There's just so many fun little details in this movie. Also, this Peaches song, it's really fun and great. But before I went and saw the movie in theaters, I had heard about it from everyone. Like, this song is amazing. This song is amazing. I'm like, oh, cool. Like a four minute amazing Jack Black song where he just goes like all out. It's like a 30 second song. So I was actually really disappointed how short it is. I wish there was like a long epic version of it, but maybe shorter is better because it leaves you wanting more. All right, so Bowser's little assistant. I, I I think this is on purpose. He sounds like Peter Lorre. Listen to him. What? A report from our intelligence. A mustachioed human has arrived in the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess has been training him. Doesn't that sound like Peter Lorre? I think it does. So this little blue star ended up being my favorite part of the whole movie. I was just rolling laughing every time. How long you guys been in here? Time, like hope, is an illusion. Please, we are depressed <laughs> enough. There's gotta be. It's such a sad <laughs> blue star. It makes everyone so, so much more depressed. Anyway, that blue star was so amazing. Every single line that it said just <laughs> made my day. Death. So good. <laughs> Yes, she does. Okay, so then they have to have a Mario Kart sequence. And so there's all these uh, eight monkey things building the carts. And look at this one's shoulder pauldron. There's a little bit of a cameo on there. Or reference, I guess. Look at that. Reference to Nintendo 64. Neat. All right, I always loved playing Mario Kart 64 when I was little. And this scene was so cool. It used to just be the movie Speed Racer got me the closest to feeling like I'm like in Mario Kart. But now, this movie, this is part so cool. <laughs> Mario Kart scene. Rainbow Road. This part is so cool. It felt like being on a roller coaster. So awesome. All right. I struggle with this part in movies, even in silly cartoon fantasy movies or in like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. When anyone is over the top of like lava or something and they're actually pretty close to it and movies are just like, yeah, 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 they're good. They're good all the way until they get inside of there. It just, it, it, I've, <clears throat> how do I word this? I've been around a lot of heat in my life and for the lava to just be like this in movies, it just so bugs me. Like when they lower people down, it's like, once they're a few feet away, they would probably just burst into flames, right? So anyway, I just get bugged by the radiant heat not actually doing anything in movies. I know, I know it's a kid's movie, um, but same kind of thing in uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Like when Willie gets lowered down, like she would totally be toast. So anyway, I've already suspended disbelief for this movie, but that part just kind of, kind of bugs me in all movies. Here's the Blue Stars mentality. <laughs> About to die, so happy. But Luigi's okay. Just a little bit hot right there. I love this part after Mario saves Luigi and he's wearing like the flying suit from the video game. Look at what Luigi says. <laughs> Mario, why do you look like a bear? What is this? <laughs> All right, so the Super Mario Brothers on 4K looks and sounds absolutely incredible the sound is super dynamic and all over the place and the visuals are seriously like all the colors and brightness are pretty unparalleled it was kind of overwhelming but this this is one of the best looking discs of 2023 by far i doubt that i'm gonna get it's gonna get bumped off the top 10 list anyway um but it was tons of fun my kids love this movie they've seen it a whole bunch of times now and i really like it so highly recommend anyway oh and the special features on here are also really good so thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah, yeah.